The name Eddystone is famous as the lighthouse saving mariners from grounding on a granite reef nine miles out to sea in the approaches to Plymouth in the English Channel. The current lighthouse is the fourth and biggest, completed in 1882, but the foundations of its predecessor, designed and built by John Smeaton, and which stood guard from 1759 to 1877, still remain on a nearby rock. Smeaton's Lighthouse's principal keeper from 1861 to 1866 was George Knott, whose family had been lighthouse keepers for generations. During his tenure, he made a four-foot model of the lighthouse, which is now in the custody of Britain's National Maritime Museum at the historic dockyard in Chatham. The model is made of mahogany, boxwood and walnut on a base of cork to represent the rock on which the lighthouse was built. During the construction of the lighthouse, sockets were chiselled out of the rock to form recesses into which similarly chiselled granite blocks dovetailed to create an immovable foundation that would weather even the most severe of storms. The lighthouse successfully withstood all that nature threw its way over its 118-year life, but when the rock into which it had been dovetailed was found to be being undermined, a new, bigger lighthouse was built on nearby rocks in the reef. Smeaton's design became a standard for replication or enhancement in subsequent lighthouses. In commemoration, a forward-thinking Plymouth City Council funded the lighthouse's dismantling and its almost complete reconstruction on Plymouth Hoe, where it remains today known as Smeaton's Tower. However, the lowermost part of the lighthouse stubbornly defeated all attempts at dismantling and remains alongside the new lighthouse as a permanent memorial to Smeaton's engineering prowess. George Knott's model depicts the lighthouse in exquisite detail, It dismantles into six sections, enabling the lighthouse's interior to be viewed as it would have been by its keepers. The bottommost section depicts the interlocking granite blocks as they were meticulously chiselled by Cornish miners, with the model's alternate blocks being made from contrasting mahogany and boxwood for easy identification. Marble keys used to further interlock the granite blocks are also depicted. During the lighthouse's construction, a special concrete that could set underwater was invented and used by Smeaton. A metal ladder from the rocks below provided external access to this floor. The second section contains a narrow shaft and two ladders leading to the lower of two storerooms. The storeroom has a working winch depicting the way in which stores were hoisted. The third section shows the upper storeroom with its cupboards. A biblical quotation can be seen painted on its upper walls. The keeper's living quarters were on the next two floors, with cooking, heating and general living space in the fourth section. And sleeping quarters with its three keepers' bunks in the fifth. In the sixth 
uppermost section is the light, which by the time of Knott's occupation had progressed to a single multi-wick oil lamp within an optical system of lenses and curved mirrors, surrounded by eight glass windows and a gallery with railing. In the model, the lamp is depicted with its cover in position. A tall flagstaff is secured to the railing, and a weather vane in the form of an arrow is mounted above the cupola. All of the external doors and windows can be opened. Access from floor to floor was via ladders through manholes in the centre of each floor. In the rocks at the model's base, Knott depicts two workboats of the sort that would have been used to ferry keepers to and from support vessels. This drone footage helps compare Knott's model of the light and its balcony with Smeaton's original as reassembled on Plymouth Hoe. My father was the keeper of the Eddystone Light, and he slept with the mermaid one fine night. From this union there came three, a porpoise and a porky, and the other was me. Yo, ho, ho, the wind blows free, oh, fair life on the rolling sea. One night while I was a trimming of the glim, a singing a verse from the evening hymn, a voice from the starboard shouted, Ahoy! And there was my mother a sitting on a boy. Yo, ho, ho, the wind blows free, oh, fair life on the rolling sea. Oh, what has become of my children three? My mother then she asked of me. One was exhibited as a talking fish, and the other was served in a chafing dish. Yo, ho, ho, the wind blows free, oh, fair life on the rolling sea. Then the phosphorus flashed in her seaweed hair. I looked again, and my mother wasn't there. A voice come echoing out through the night. The hell with the keeper of the Eddystone light. Yo, ho, ho, the wind blows free. Oh, fair life on the rolling sea. Guided tours of the National Museum's collection and research facility at Number One Smithley are held several times a year. Tours are advertised and can be pre-booked through the Chatham Historic Dockyard website.